I'm going to try to keep the introduction brief so that we have time for actual discussion. Um, if you read the session um, description, then you might have seen there's a link to uh, the sort of wider annual plan work that this is part of. Um, I'm trying to not bore anyone by mentioning objectives and key results and this kind of thing. Um, we're going to try to go to the essence um, of what we're trying to sort of do here today. Um, then there will be a brief um, break for questions after introduction, and then the main part, uh, which is the discussion. Um, so we have 40 minutes, so if ever that's not en enough time, I invite anyone who's interested to come tomorrow to our lunch meetup. Um, it's going to be during the lunch hour in Lviv, so um, grab some food and come and chat, either about this or other questions related to uh, tool sustainability. Um, for async discussion, we have the Tool Sustainability Telegram channel. If you're not already a member, um, this QR code is sort of the highway to join. Um, so just very briefly, um, Wikimedia Cloud Services um, provides uh, a range of, well, cloud services, um, of which Toolforge is sort of uh, um, kind of the star. Uh, if you have something to, to deploy, uh, about the web service, um, whatever, um, this should be um, your, first, your first stop. Um, this is what is called sort of a, a platform as a service. Um, then there are other services that you might be familiar with, and we're not going to talk about them here today. Um, so as I said, Toolforge is a hosting platform. It's used by both technical volunteers um, and internal teams, um, but most importantly by technical volunteers. Um, so like a number that's often cited is that um, over 30% of edits to the wiki projects come from bots that are hosted on Toolforge. So just to get an idea of sort of um, the scale of things. Um, so as a team, we want to make it better. Um, but of course, uh, it's not always that straightforward to know what, what better means. Um, this sort of has to be defined. There are different, um, there are dif different user personas. As I said, there are internal teams. Um, there are us as Toolforge admins. Um, what's better for us is maybe not better for, for everyone. So we're sort of trying to start defining what, what better means. Um, so when we're talking about improving Toolforge, um, we want to see this through a lens of sustainability. And sustainability is something that um, most people have sort of an intuitive understanding for, but it's still kind of a, a fuzzy term. So again, we're here to so, sort of start defining um, what it means in this context. Um, and also, importantly, um, how we could measure it. Um, because um, I think it can be recognized that not everything that is worth doing is measurable or easily measurable. But we need to start somewhere. Um, we need to have some kind of uh, um, finger that, that points us in a direction. Um, like, what could we do? What would, of all the things that we could do, um, what would have the greatest impact? And we would like to rely on something else um, than just anecdotes or, um, you know, listening to the loudest and most repetitive um, voices in the room. Um, well, it, it's a great strategy if you want to get something done, be loud, be repetitive. But for us to make decisions, um, we sort of have to have a, a broader picture than, than that. Um, so again, um, I'm, I'm repeating that we're just starting to define what sustainability means. Um, but at the sort of highest level, um, we think that there are technical factors on the one hand and social factors on, on the other hand. And then, of course, there might be some factors that are a little bit in between. Um, so these are just examples. They don't mean to encompass everything. Um, so a technical factor could be how easy is it to deploy and maintain a tool on, on Toolforge. 
Like, does it take three hours and 50 steps? Do you have to go all around Wikitech to find the documentation? Or is, is there a workflow that is actually fairly straightforward? Um, more from the perspective of uh, um, Toolforge admins is maybe how easy is it to maintain and improve the platform itself? And then maybe um, kind of the meta question is, um, how do we make data-informed decisions? And this um, also talks about the score in itself. The better, the more data we have, the better um, the score is defined, the more we can know um, in which direction we should go. Um, again, social factors, there may be many. Um, but I think um, sort of the most important question here is like, how easy is it to collaborate? How easy is it for a non-maintainer to step in if a tool is not working? How easy is it to find the source code and, and fork um, a project that's abandoned? So um, these type of questions. Um, so to recap, um, we believe that sustainability is multidimensional. Um, we would like some help with finding out which its most important factors are. And most importantly, um, for each of these factors um, that we might consider, um, we have to consider whether improving on them actually reduces the time, the effort, and the knowledge required to um, contribute and collaborate on tools. And so, um, again, more widely, the, the, the big question here is, what should we be working on? Um, what will give us the most sort of um, bang for our buck or bang for um, donor spark? Um, because at any given time, there are many, many things we could do, and there are many, many things we, as um, developers and admins, are passionate about, but we sort of, we want to go in the right direction. Um, so this is just an example to show you sort of the inspiration for the score that we're trying to develop. You might have, may have seen this on um, something similar on GitHub. This comes from um, library.io. Um, it's basically sort of a, a composite score for um, a piece of software, as any software package. So PyWikiBot is something that um, many people here recognize. And it looks at factors such as, you know, um, like is there a basic info, is there a readme, is there a source repository, um, how many contributors, how many stars. So this is just to sort of illustrate the concept. We're not going to try and evaluate tools in this manner, but it, this sort of type of score is something that we want to have for the Toolforce platform as a whole. Um, so I sort of try to reduce um, the questions to two basic ones. Um, so one would be, what are the key technical and social factors that should influence this score, in your opinion? And again, I'm sort of not trying to ask you to brainstorm in the abstract. I sort of want your personal user stories, um, the work that you do, the tools that you deploy, um, maybe you are an end user of a tool or you are a stakeholder in some, some other sense. Um, so also when you speak, I would like you to sort of interview, um, not interview, <laughs> to lead with, you know, what sort of user you are and what perspective you come from so that we understand um, your personal story. Um, and so the second question is, how can we develop a collaborative framework um, that allows for continuous input integration. So this would be um, a first step here with you all, but how could we continue this? Because we as a team, we, we, can't, we can imagine some things that we think will, will be an improvement, and we're, we're doing that already um, as part of wider sort of annual plan work. Um, we're trying to reduce the steps of deployment for tools, and we're trying to design a UI, a web UI that would make it easier for newcomers to not have to SSH and become your tool and do all these things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we, we believe that that's something that's going to improve things, but we also recognize there are many other things that we can't even imagine. So we're asking for your help. So this is the end of the introduction. Um, any questions before we start discussing? Yeah. 
Do you, um, should I give you a microphone? <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, I like the idea of a score to just kind of organize uh, all the kind of tools we have. But uh, for example, um, we should maybe have a division between uh, uh, mandatory requirements and soft points for a score. For example, having a um, license file is probably a mandatory requirement because otherwise uh, uh, we do not satisfy uh, core um, thermos of services of Wikimedia Cloud, for example. So maybe it's um, somehow important to have this division between uh, <laughs> hard requirements and uh, extra points to, give, to have a good score, maybe. So for example, having a readme is okay, but that's maybe something <laughs> mandatory to point uh, to the um, license or the kind, this kind of uh, extra details. Uh, or maybe a, a good point, maybe, is the readme containing uh, build instructions? or But maybe a readme by itself, it may, it may be too little or this kind of thing. So it's maybe good to have a, this kind of division. So harder requirements and uh, extra points or extra, I don't know. This was just my... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, so yeah, you probably know there are already some some hard requirements, and license is one of them. Um, then a different thing is, of course, enforcement. Um, whether this license is actually easily um, viewable for people, um, and that is something that could be. Um, same thing for source code. Everything is supposed to be open source. Part of that is the right to fork, and so on. But is it being enforced? Um, I, I agree these are sort of two different questions. Thank you for that. Uh, I was wondering uh, in the uh, prioritization that you are making, whether you are mainly or fully looking at um, sustainability from a point of view of presence of software developers? Or do you also want to take factors into account like certain tools are really highly, yeah, often used by Wikimedians, by users, they have lots of users. Is that something that is, that is important to the, in the weighing as well? So from what perspective are you looking at this? Um, so if I understood your question right, you're talking about uh, um, critical tools for the community and, and the support or possibility of support that they're getting. Um, so I sort of have to caveat that um, this is sort of beyond the mandate of our team. We, we, we would love to, but we can't just adopt all the tools that need some love. But maybe we could help in the way that we get surface data about you know, the state of tools, the health of tools, the impact of tools that would then uh, make it possible for other people to point to this and say, hey, you know, this is what's going on, we need some help, we, we, on the basis of this we're going to, I don't know, request a grant or, or do something. So in that way, um, we could help, but for sure we, we can't recruit all the software developers to help with all the tools, <laughs> unfortunately. No, but I can imagine it's a factor that may motivate developers to work for certain tools because they know that the tool is really often used. So it can be, even even though it may not be the core thing you're measuring, it may be something that helps in, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, for, for sure there have been um, conversations about this in the past also. Um, I don't know how familiar you are with uh, Tool Hub, which is sort of an information hub for, for different tools. And there could definitely be developments of this that would make it possible for people to flag tools as abandoned or you know, start them as, you know, hey, you know, I'm using this tool for this thing or um, try to go in that direction. So this is something that has been talked about in the past, but uh, for reasons, um, things have not happened. But yeah, definitely this is something we are also thinking about. Uh, first to comment a bit on what, what Sandra said. So I also think that it could be seen as part of the, you mentioned social, um, sustainability criteria or something like this to have number of users there as a th yeah it indicates that it's useful but also 
to see the users also as people who help maintain it, reporting bugs and maybe even like um, uh, going through the bugs and helping helping in the issue discussion. So it, even if there's only one developer, there can be an active user community who actually helps in the development as well. Mm. And then a bit more wider, I was thinking maybe there should be a third um, um, kind of category of this sustainability criteria. Um, I tried to formulate it as something like the resource aspects. So how easy is it to get formal help from the foundation or affiliates? And I suppose that can depend then on which language it's written in and what kind of technical choices have been made. Is it something that the uh, foundation staff can help with or cannot help with? Does that make sense? Yeah. Would you mind elaborating a little bit what you mean by getting help from the foundation or affiliates? What, what sort of help are you are you thinking about? Um, so, if I chose a, a language that no one in the staff uh, uses, then probably they can't help with my code. Whereas, um, if it's something that they can help with, then maybe in in some situations. Uh, even if I'm the only developer, I'm not alone with the code in the sense that um, if a certain change is made, it could be factored in that we will provide some help to the tools that need to adapt to these changes. So then it would be part of the tool sustainability, whether such support is available to this tool or not. Okay, so say that a tool written in Rust, for instance, uh, um, it would be considered that, uh, well, it would be difficult to get help because we don't have that many, um, maybe Rust developers, whereas if it's Python or something more common, then it has a greater chance. Exactly. Yeah, yep. From that sense, okay. Hello. <laughs> Uh, also, maybe we have the p opportunity to uh, give good points to projects uh, who uh, prefer Wikimedia GitLab and or Wikimedia Garrett instead of GitHub and Bitbucket. Because it's really, uh, I think, a strategic point from our perspective to give uh, good points to people who uh, allow contributors to just join a free software like uh, Garrett and GitLab instead of becoming a, uh, a customer of Microsoft and or Atlassian. And so it's maybe um, a good moment to do this kind of uh, so evaluation of uh, points based on uh, where is the repository. So uh, maybe it's a good uh, thing. Also because we have a lot of repositories that are only on GitHub and uh, uh, so not just a, a, re a mirror, but are really uh, core development on GitHub. I don't know how many people here uh, have uh, personal repositories or work on repositories for Wikimedia that are only on GitHub. Can you raise your hand? We, we have maybe some repositories free for people. So. And only on um, Bitbucket, uh, some persons, Magnus Mainz, or <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but it's maybe a, a good moment to think about uh, where are our projects and uh, maybe <laughs> Yeah, um, I think beyond the sort of ideological um, aspect of this, I, I think I do agree that it would help if we had them closer to home in a sense. And it could also help with discoverability. For instance, on GitLab, we have the Toolforge sort of organization. And now when you create a tool um, on Toolforge, you can get automatically um, your repository on GitLab. So, so it's easy for people to do it. And it's easy for us to know where the um, where the code is in that sense. So I, w I would agree from that perspective. Uh, responding a bit to to what Valerie was saying, I don't think scores are the or or penalizing or or um, rewarding projects uh, by doing something or the other is the best way to encourage certain types of of uh, behavior because. I believe people just do what, whatever is easier. And if we don't make that path the easiest one, it's going to be rowing against the current or whatever expression would apply here. So what I was going to suggest was precisely this, that we should think about the, the happy path, you know, for, for a beginner especially. Because someone who already has some experience, they may make some choice about what platform they use to host their code or whatever. But we want to encourage everyone who is uh, joining to, to, to have a, a, an easy, for example, if I create a repository 
on GitHub and I want to host the the result as a as a web page, I can just go to the settings and turn on GitHub Pages. There there was at least when I tried to do this for Toolforge, there was no easy way to do it. I had to come up with this hacky way to sync the GitHub repository with Toolforge so that I could have the tool hosted on Toolforge, but the code still on GitHub. So these steps that I took, because I wanted my tool on Toolforge, it was in GitHub pages before. This is the kind of thing that if it was easier, I would have done it. So I don't need any score to tell me you're, you're not being a good citizen of the community. So I believe that that <laughs> might help Just a lot. A, a direct answer to this. Thank you for this comment. Um, so I, again, the point system would not be to say, hey, you, you know, you are a bad project, you are a good project, but it would be to say 67% um, of all the tools on Toolforge are on um, Wikimedia GitLab. And if we think that it would be a good thing to increase this, then we could start thinking about how, and maybe, as you say, by making it easier, by making it the default way, so it wouldn't be pointing at projects, say, bad project, good project. But just have this data. Um. And I wonder if you're aware of the chaos community. I apologize if it was mentioned earlier in the talk. It stands for Community Health Analytics and Open Source Software. And they develop a series of metrics around open source projects for sustainability. Uh, not all of them are um, implemented as numerical scores. A lot of it is also just uh, good practices. Um, so I wonder if you have any contact with this community. No, no. Thank you for bringing it up. Chaos? Yeah, with two S at the end. Chaos, yeah. You had asked for comments and about the presentation itself. Are you, are we now moving? Are you still waiting for that, or are we moving to the experiment um, ex, uh, personal experiences that you were asking also? Just yeah, to make sure. I, because I, yeah, I think we kind of flew into it. <laughs> I, I do have uh, a couple of thoughts about that in particular. Some of them are already mentioned, but essentially, for me. Um, I don't develop a lot of tools. I'm not that uh, used to it. So it's the most important factors for sustainability in my perspective are making the, the process easy enough that I can replicate it even if, I, even if I come back to a tool like two years later in the next hackathon or something. And I don't have to remember how to do this, all of these small steps. You know, there are some things that help like the Git uh, TLDR page, um, the, the, the documentation general. But for example, um, I think it's VS Code and some other tools right now have a way to log in v via the browser. So uh, right now I have to have the SSH key be, uh, in my laptop, but if I change laptop, I have to register a key again. So if there was a way to log into Toolforge to update my tools in a more user-friendly way, that might be the kind of thing that would help with you know, beginners to not have as much as many friction points. Uh, also, the Toolforge tool seems to be very much centered in uh, server-side tools, so sort of tools that run a server-side component. But I would, uh, again, there are lots of things that can be done with just the front-end component, and many people, many more people are comfortable with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript than, than with you know, PHP or whatever, Python, whatever. Uh, and, and it's also simpler, uh, tech, um, theoretically, so maybe allowing documenting or even making it easy to host that kind of tools um, could could also help with making those tools more, more uh, uh, making the community more healthy uh, as in people engaged continually into sorry if I'm rambling up. <laughs> no 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 very very good points so yeah so having easier interfaces to toolboard is something that we are um, working on. Um, I would discourage anyone to try to connect from VS Code, as that's not really um, a good license. I'm sorry, but maybe I didn't uh, cl cl uh, explain cl clearly. I meant VS Code has a login system that works via the browser, so you just click a link on VS okay, Code yeah, okay. you to mean log in yeah, into yeah, yeah, VS Code. Yeah, yeah. So something similar for Toolforge, but not via VS Code. That's okay, okay, okay. 
Yeah, no, I just mentioning it because some people have been trying to connect to Toolboard um, through VS Code SSH, and we're not very okay with that. <laughs> That's yeah. an aside. Um, <laughs> So you're talking about having um, a web interface through which you can go to Toolboard. So you don't have to have your own SSH keys. You don't have to um, remember all these steps. Uh, am I interp interpreting this correctly? Yeah. There's an online comment, so I'm going to read that. Uh, the comment says, there's probably the widest support on Toolforge on the official Telegram channel or the, or the IRC channel for Wikimedia Cloud. There should be a new section on, quote, using with GitHub, end quote, under the existing document section, uh, and then a share and maintain tools. Is that generally what's, uh, what, what that person is hearing? I'm not sure I understood the question. Uh, I'm not really sure because I'm just repeating the, the person <laughs> that, that wrote that, that question. <laughs> so I guess we, we have some time, so we could wait for him to... Yeah, if they could, could follow yeah. up. That would so whoever viewing the stream, could you clarify your question, please? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I have the problem with tools on Toolforge that unlike every other Wikimedia servers, there are no local caching servers, so everyone comes direct from the central data center, which leads to problems from some internet providers and makes some tools but sometimes basically unusable because of slow loading times. Are there any ideas to yeah, have also caches for Toolforge? Um, I think this is not a question I could address right now. I would be grateful if you open a fabricator ticket um, explaining your problem so that we could address it actually with some more time. Yep, so the online uh, comment just says, uh, in general, improve the two force documents, doc, uh, documents or documentation. They didn't say which, what it means. Okay. Who else? Um, I'd like to comment on, on this, like how to make it deployments easy is kind of if it, part of it. Yeah, so... I would like to see as much automation as possible, that it doesn't have to be really that simple if it's automated and if there's a nice template that I can use to set up a new project, for instance, a static files project template, it does the CI CD, maybe with nice uh, branch or pull request reviews or kind of previews so that I can, I can see what it looks like, then it's easier to for uh, multiple people to collaborate as well, because I'm been getting pull requests that are not kind of um, from people who don't know so well kind of the background why the tool is like the tool is. Um, so then, for them, the easiest way is also to make a pull request, and then everything else would be automated, uh, so they can see if their pull request worked or not. I don't have to explain to them why it doesn't work, if that makes sense. So if, if I got it right, the idea would be to have some um, simple um, template workflows for um, things like static web pages that are uh, relatively simple. Yes, and some so, kind so of... So for people can only think about actually um, submitting a PR and don't have to um, think about the whole CI, CD uh, and all of that. Yes, but then to like the current situation, at least for me, is that I don't know how to make a CI CD for a Toolforge project. So there is no automated CI CD now for, for the projects I, I work on. So. I see. Uh, I would like to also take the opportunity to make a pr uh, provocation that I sometimes. Uh, doing these circles where Wikimedians and open source developers are um, mixed, which is, w could we figure out ways to make open source software development and collaboration a bit more wiki-like? So right now, um, Valerie gave a, a good example of Magnus Mann's uh, uh, Bitbucket, Bitbucket uh, repositories. There are dozens of issues, dozens of pull requests, some, some of them, do work. Some of them might need some CI/CD to, to make sure that they, they work. But 
it's very difficult to rely on a single person. And this model of I am the developer, I am, I am the, the person who is m responsible for integrating changes kind of could be a bit more open if we think about how wikis work. Like people can just make changes. And of course, I'm not suggesting <laughs> that anyone can commit to repository, but maybe we can have different levels. I think it was someone said about something about criticality of different tools. So for example, for tools that don't make changes, that don't make edits, for example, or don't have side effects, let's say, maybe a more wiki-like way of working could could uh, be uh, adopted. And this would encourage more people to, to get involved, like you were saying, make pull requests uh, for small things that could be changed without overloading the main maintainer. And I believe that we did a bit of this when we uh, adopted the, the, well, we implemented the two um, policies, the, I think it's the mandatory uh, source code and the right to fork, no, ad adoption, right to adopt, something like that. The, the ability to adopt a tool that has been abandoned does not exist, for example, on GitHub. Is if, so, if the maintainer ab abandons a tool, nobody can go and, and continue it. You have to fork, and everything that references it uh, needs to re adjust. So maybe something a bit more open could be... We could think about this as a way to make the software development a bit more wiki-like and also make it more sustainable by lowering the barriers to participation. So it's just a maybe <laughs> a hypothetical idea, but I, I like to get people thinking about it. So how, how would you see this implemented in practice? Is, is this just about policy that is then enforced or? Um? In, in technical terms, for example, if we have a, a way to signal a repository as being low risk, there could be, for example, a bot that automatically merges a, a code contribution that gets thumbs up by other community members, for example. So, if, so even if the maintainer is, is uh, unavailable, uh, th that contribution could be integrated. Or, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm thinking off the top of my head, but automation, as he said, is probably a good way to implement this. But we need to first decide what we want to encourage and then make that path uh, be executed somehow. Yep, uh, just another comment online. Uh, just very uh, suggestion that maybe start a monthly one to two hour two force meetup instead of once a year. So that was a suggestion. Um, <clears throat> so we do actually have a monthly um, tool forge meetup, or are we talking about? We're talking about online meetings that that anyone can join. If so, we do have one, but that one is most for. Um, Tool Forge admins or anyone who has um, sort of a stake in, in the platform administration itself. But really anyone who wants to join um, is welcome. Um, but I, I think I would agree that we haven't done a very good job of sort of promoting this group. Um, so yeah, I, I hear you. So just a reaction to the comment we had. Uh one of the things that we can encourage through the metrics is uh, having repositories with multiple maintainers. Like, try to encourage to have like not only one person that is able to merge, but having a core team for the tools. The more the tools are important, maybe the more we need to have like three, four, five people that are able to merge. Maybe not ten because it starts to be too much, but uh, maybe that's something that we can, could try to encourage because. As you said, some tools, if Magnus disappear, then we are fucked. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's never been a conversation about this topic without Magnus's name coming up <laughs> several times. <laughs> and, and no one knows what to do about the situation. So <laughs> yeah, I think uh, the, pr uh, the problem was uh, rather so Justin was to make the development of the tools more wiki-like. I think the, the, the simple solution would be to treat critical tools the same, in the same processes like the media wiki software itself. So have them in the same, yeah, the same system of development, the same with the equal structure. So are we talking about sort of the foundation adopting yes. certain tools that yeah, are considered yeah, basically core. basically that the tools are adopted by the foundation. Or yeah. at least there being some sort of pathway. Yeah. Um, 
yeah. yeah, this is something that comes up every time as well. I think that's uh, related, but sort of a separate topic. Um, Where can I find out more about this meetup that you mentioned? Because I don't think I've heard of it before. <laughs> so it's on the schedule. Are we talking about, no, you're not talking about the meetup tomorrow uh, here. The monthly one that you mentioned. You're talking about the monthly tool force meeting? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, criticism taken. We will um, advertise this better. If you haven't heard about it, it's probably not your fault. Or should it be a, a new one for users? That's another possibility. I, I will follow up on this. Uh, wait, uh, we, we say the hello to Magnus. So if Magnus, are you listening? We just will say that we love you. We love your software. <laughs> we are sorry if you had not to Wikimedia GitLab. We are sorry if you tried to adopt the differential, but the differential was ugly, and so everybody adopting differential was failing. Uh, we just uh, think that uh, maybe Bitbucket is uh, maybe not the next step, uh, just that, <laughs> just to clarify my position. Thanks, Magnus. <laughs> I'm sorry, just to add what you were asking about specific examples uh, on on some wikis, uh, on media wiki wikis, we have the, the concept of auto-confirmed auto editors. Um, and also in, in Stack Overflow, you have that system of where you go, as you make more contributions, you get more rights. So maybe something like this also could happen, for example, after you make several pull requests to a repository and get accepted. In, in, for example, in Wikimedia's GitLab, we could implement a way to gi automatically give people more permissions to help maintain those tools. Those, this is another way that could help sustainability of, of those projects. <laughs> I had one more. Like, I want to suggest a metric. Uh, for diversity, like from how many countries do we have maintainers, uh, how many projects have maintainers from both global north and global south, and so on. I think this is also part of the sustainability, so that like we are well represented globally. We need to make sure also that people are okay with us collecting this data, but I agree it could be interesting. Thank <laughs> you.